Welcome to the Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioners meeting of August 3rd, 2023 at 4.30 p.m. Is it 4.30? Yes, 4.32. Yeah. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room, Deerfield Municipal Offices. In accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, anyone intending to tape the meeting must identify themselves to the clerk and provide their name and address for the record. The dial-in number is toll-free 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580, and the passcode is 570012. Thank you. Um, public comment. Suspended for purpose of discussion. We'll still do, well, that's, <laughs> I guess, but we're, since there is no public Rocky, comment. Do you have anything to say? No, he already shook his head, so we're moving on. <laughs> um, uh, we're going to go down to uh, first item on the discussion is update and review of host community agreement with Conf Confidence Analytics. They were unfortunately not able to meet with us today. Do we have a status report? Yes, if I may. So um, I've invited uh, Mr. Nick Mosley uh, from Confidence Analytics to the board's regularly scheduled meeting on Wednesday, August 9th. Uh, he'll be on at 7 p.m., which I agreed works with him today uh, via email, um, and that'll be after the discussion with the Energy Committee about the audits. Perfect. Um, okay, uh, moving on, we have review and approval of decision and orders re concerning dangerous dog complaint at 477 Greenfield Road. Um, did everyone have a chance to read the order that um, our lawyer uh, had written up? Yes, I I read it. Okay, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, then we will um, vote to. Um, I make a motion to approve the order as written. Okay. Second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, abstain. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, Casey, can you just make sure that this gets to um, Kate? Clayton Jones, so she knows that uh, we are finished with this. Yep. Um, thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is update on storm damage as a result of flash flooding on July 10th, 16th, and the 21st, and the authorization of um, emergency spending. And we also, um, before Kevin, before we ask you to do the update, we're going to do um, we have a reposting of the emergency select board meeting pursuant to general laws, chapter 30A, section 20, and 930 CMR uh, 29.02. This was an in-person uh, police department conference room meeting right here at 8 Conway Street in South Deerfield. It was July 24th at 11 a.m. And it was to discuss storm damage as a result of the flooding on the 21st, and it was an update with the Conservation Commission and um, assorted uh, state people. Great. So- um, Do you need a motion to post that or something? Or? Well, it, it was posted as an emergency meeting. Yep. Um, what you should do is just outline what the discussion points were, and really it was updates on damage, updates on cost, Right. My ref my reflection. What else did I miss? Well, it was discussion with the conservation commission chair. Pete what? Log attended. Was and, the state the state uh, and there was um come? no the, it was not NRCS. It okay. was just who who was, was there any state people there? No um no we didn't have any state people there. It was really discussion amongst the management team. Um, and the attendees there were John, yourselves, um, absent Trevor, yeah, it was not me, there, there. Chris, Kevin, uh, Tim D Drumgool, Kurt Seaman from the fire district. Who am I missing, Kevin? Ben Clark. Ben Clark. 
Yeah. Um, and it was really a discussion of various sites around town that were critical, an update on the list and the types of damage and the fact that um, we, we were had, getting quotes. We had discovered more, more, yes. more of Pete Law places. was there from ConCom. Yeah, and that, that's right. That was Monday's meeting after all that. Because we got and then we got flashed, uh, flash flooded uh, right around 3.30 again. Yes. Uh, we did all that work Saturday, Sunday, and then you guys had your meeting. And then four hours later, yes. all of it got wiped out again. So, yes. Yeah. So what we're doing is really outlining for the public that that discussion was had. Um, we were posted according to the emergency allowances. But for purposes of notification, this reposting satisfies the need to uh, advise the public via open meeting law. Okay, okay. great. And Chris Sounds has good. developed, Chris uh, Nolan has developed um, a brief on the minutes. We're going to actually see if Alex can clean those up so okay. you'll be able to vote them um, great. at a later date. I don't know that that could happen by next week, but we'll do the best we can. Okay. It's, it's okay. Um, so, Kevin, I would like you to. Um, go through our list that we have so far. I know that you had a, a couple additional places on Lower Road that might not be on this list yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm attempting to go through this list because I'm, I'm looking at Johnny's list at the same time. John mm -hmm. list. Okay. Um, That's what I'm looking at, which, oh, which brings different. us up to the 4.7. Yep. So right now we're at 4.7 or 6. Do the 4.7 is to stabilize the situation and to open the roads. This is not complete fixes. Right. Complete fixes, if you're doing restoration, including the new sites on Lower Road, is going to be closer to 18 million. So I just want people to be clear. This is 4.7 is just the beginning yeah. to make sure that roads are open. Yeah, correct. Um, if you'd like... Uh, probably the easiest way again for me, just for my brain. Um, if I go start at uh, the west side, kind sure. of come across, you know. So obviously, we went ahead and we took care of Matthews Road. Cocott took care of that for us. Um, from there, then Cocott moved over to Stillwater. Kevin, Road. can you just just a second? Yeah. Um, or do you want to go right down the list? How do you? No, 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 no. I just want to. Okay, so um, on Matthews Road, um, Cocott did that. That's correct. yes, correct. You're there were multiple, multiple washouts. There was two major locations and six smaller ones. And, uh, right. and those have been fixed, Kevin? Yeah. Yes. Uh, it hasn't been paved yet, um, but it's it's stabilized, which is okay. basically what we were trying to do is we we're trying to stabilize the town first. Right. Um, and then come back with hard pack. You know, one of the things that, you know, uh, I want people to be aware of, part of the reason why I'm kind of holding back on the paving is we I'm looking for 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 compaction. You know, so right. if if you go through an area now um, and, and just pave it and it goes ahead, especially what I'm very concerned about is still water hill. Yeah. You get some pumps in there. Somebody comes flying down that road. They're going to jump right off and go right into the river. Yeah. Um, so I'm holding back. I'm trying to get good compaction there before we go ahead and we finish off and, and, and top that. Yep. Yeah. So, Kevin, just um, I know we talked earlier, but um, let's. Since we have some numbers on a larger spreadsheet, let's just focus on the repair work and and what you've been able to accomplish mm -hmm. and and what still needs to be accomplished in each area, and we won't worry about the the numbers so much because yeah. the the numbers are going to vary a little yeah. bit. Because I'll be honest with you, um, stuff still rearing its ugly head. I mm -hmm. mean, we I, we we came across a section on one twenty five, one twenty seven River or uh, Lower Road. That's about 25 feet wide and about 60 to 80 feet deep. Um, and then we found another one up on still steam mill. Um, again, part of our road. Uh, we've got an issue there. Um, and again, they're just popping up all over the place. But to, to work from the west end of town and coming oh, across. Go ahead, Kevin. Um, I just wanted to be able to make some notes. Sure. And no, you were so, going so Matthews fast. Road, for the most part, is, was put back together by Cocots. Okay. Um, it's still awaiting pavement. And then that'll be done. And then we jump over to Stillwater Hill. Stillwater Hill, obviously, for anybody that didn't see it, multiple sections that were taken out. Um, Restabilization, uh, reestablished the drainage that was there. And again, that section right there, we're waiting on uh, paving. Because there were culvert heads and stuff there on the, along that side, trying to catch that water coming down that east side, right? That, that got wiped out. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. The east side got really wiped out. You know, fortunately, the the... 
the structure that was taken out, we had uh, we had one in stock. Great. Uh, so we're able to utilize that and actually, Very to be honest, we get worked out even better than what I originally anticipated on how That's great. everything fit together. Yep. Um, so from there, then then you can jump over to Hawks Road. Hawks Road is is a nightmare. Yeah. Um, going up the hill, uh, I have multiple issues there. I've got bad runoff on the edge. We got some stone into it today. Uh, again, those are major temporary fixes. I got to get some drainage going across the road because there's so much velocity coming down the hill. With you know, in the past, we've tried the round stone. They tried the riprap, the holding arts. It, there's just too much water coming down too fast. And, and at least this time, you can walk up the hill and you can look in the woods and you can watch how the how the materials laid down, so you can see where your actual waterways are that aren't a stream. Right. So in in some aspects, this is good because this gives us a real good vision of where we need to be. Yeah. Um, so that's on the paved section. So then you get onto the dirt section, um, multiple houses within there, uh, the couple drainage again, that needs to be fixed, um, because it got blown out and then last past the last house on the bottom of the hill. And again, that dirt hill going down, uh, that's a nightmare that needs more drainage, uh, cutting across. And it's not going to make a difference because all the water is going to the same exact place. Right. So we're, we're just having it get there a little sooner, um, which reduces it coming down the hill, which hopefully should save our road up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and then from there, all the way to Conway, um, another nightmare, you know, uh, to, to be able to make it truly uh, passable. And, and we think about passable, um, you know, we're not thinking like a, like a four wheel drive. We're thinking it has to be a car and passable car. Uh, we have tens of thousands of dollars, um, we've got issues with the two culverts that are there at the, um, the two ponds yeah. or, or I should say the pond. We've got problems there. We've got washout. We've got, again, major issues there. And who's going to, is somebody working there or is this, this, I mean, is a specific company working there? Um, well, this, this whole area yeah. is, is technically it's still the town road. Right. And we're still supposed to be able to keep it passable. Uh, according to the bylaw, we don't have anybody at the moment. Looking at I'm sorry, no, yeah. no, no, yeah. no. Basically, no. We've we're still trying to get on the the sections Major. where people are. Right. Um, that right there, that is so secondary. Okay. Uh, very similar to one part of McCullen Farm Road. The right. first part is done, so that way the farmers can get down in and out. But again, yeah. that fix right there, that's that's going to be about thirty thousand dollars all by itself. Never right. mind the big hole that's further down in. Um, yeah. So, so sticking with with the thought process of west to east, so that takes care of Hawks Road, um, Albany Road on the far end by the Conway line, excuse me, the uh, Shelburne line, um, that's beat up in pretty good shape. Yeah. That needs quite a bit of work. Uh, Upper Road, there was multiple areas within Upper Road where where the edges um, got blown out. Um, right. Those, for the most part, have been taken care of. What we did was was uh, Baker came in and took care of those sections. He yeah. made like shelves yeah. with, with with the material that he had there, and then we brought in stone. So the stone sitting on top of the shelf. Oh, good. Um, again, but this is a temporary fix because if we get another super saturation again, that yeah. that that what that shelf he made is going to blow out, which right. means everything's going to go. And, right. and realistically, when we're talking these really really big ones, and this is why it gets so expensive, is you have to get to the toe or the very bottom. Of, of the hill and that's like and, and you have to build down. big there right i mean like big like volkswagen big and if you can build from there up then you've got good stabilization right but if you go ahead and you just put it on something soft saturates again it's going to blow up that's you know? the and, same and, issue we've got in multiple yeah. areas because our time. roads are just they Sheer. drop off 50 60 feet yeah. and there's it's straight yeah. down and there's nothing to build on top of it's exactly. not like oh you gotta like um you know, who's that road blown out, but you're, you've got, you know, it drops 10 feet on one side, six right. feet on the other. That's workable. Right. You've got a base to work from, even though it's a stream bed, but it, it's um, when you get river road and some of these others you're talking about, it's a cliff. Right. And it's like, how do you, yeah. Well, especially when, you, when you're looking at, at the end of Hoosick, and I mean, that is kind of sketchy through there. And we are trying to see what the best that we can do to get that thing, take the curse of that curve out at the yep. same time. Um, you know, again, if we you know if the stream can be reestablished back to its original position, 
Um, we would be right. able to bump over the road basically 15 feet and straighten that whole corner out. You know, and yeah. the reason why we we don't put a big piece of equipment out there for 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 plowing or sanding is because that section right there, technically, so, if, if we came around that corner, the plow would be hanging off the road, it'd be hanging right. in the air. Yeah. Um, so that's why we we we've been taking care of that with pickup trucks. Right. Um, you know, and 550s and one tons and things. Yep. Um that right there, that right there all by itself is gonna be you might as well go ahead and throw four hundred thousand at that. Mm. Um so then you got lower road, obviously the big hole, uh, yeah. which is physically being worked on as we speak. Um, I got uh, an estimate today of two weeks. What's the plan there? Uh, basically, they're they presently right now they're cleaning out all of the debris because all the concrete yeah. and all the asphalt, none of that can be buried. Right. Um. So all of that's being removed. Okay. Um, that's a big job. They, from, they reclaim that and we get a credit for that. Okay. Anyway. No, no, we no. There's no credits. There's not no, 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 no. We, we, if we bring back the asphalt clean, that's free. <laughs> but when we bring back the concrete, we pay. Right. Uh, and then they grind the two of them together and we buy it back. Right. Now, where, what, and when you say there, where? Uh, True Core okay. or, or any of your aggregate think, places. Yep. Or excuse me, okay. True Stone. Yep. Um, yeah. But I mean, that's, that's what they do. Yeah. Um, and it's not just them. It's, it's everybody, you know, they, they take in the material. This is what they'll do. They'll, they'll, and you know, and again, sometimes they will take some of the old asphalt and it'll, it's actually goes back into the mix of your new roads because that's right. part of the super pave. Yeah. Um, uh, project. So is this 270 lower road you're talking about? Is that the one where the big watch out? Um, no, that one, that one is huge. Uh, oh wait. Which is the one that's got the hole? I mean, uh, the, unfortunately, this the way this is put together, it's it difficult. To, it, yeah. So road collapse was at one thirty eight. Okay, I got I got multiple places on on River Road. Right, that's why I'm saying which uh, one is. Excuse me, on lower on upper little, little, lower right, road. road. Lower road, I have multiple places. Um, I know I have obviously the big one. Is yeah. it one thirty eight? Is that the one that's the entire roadway thirty feet long collapsed? Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that yes. is correct. Okay. I just wanted to grasp on where we were. Yeah. Correct. Uh, and again, there's there's some that were found, yeah. poor choice of putting it, that aren't on this list. Yep. Yep, that's um, fine. So so there's still multiple areas that we still have to deal with on lower road. Uh, Mill Village Road, for the most part, is in pretty decent shape, except over by um, Boynton Road. West, or excuse me, Boynton Road East. That is where um, we've always had that flooding problem at the end of the field. Um, that really needs that really needs to be replaced. Which um, which uh, right there at the at uh, um, where the field enters to the Melnick's field, field where it used to be corn. Now it's brat. Now it's hay. Yeah. You know, yeah. what I'm talking the big field so. where we always used to have the water run across, and right. every winter, you know, you've got barrels sitting there all the time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Um, so that right there, that that needs to be that needs to be addressed, yeah. um, because again, it, that that's it's a public safety issue. Um, continuing up on Old Deerfield, that's when the real nightmare came into play. Um, starting on Keats Road, Keats Road had multiple buckles. They had uh, uh, missing side of the road. How we were able to get a vehicle up and down just past the tracks is beyond me because it was so undercut. Yeah, um, there was one driveway they were completely cut off. Um, but the neighbors were nice enough, obviously, they allow them to go in and out through their yards. So that way they can get in and out. Um, that's been taken care of, and that's actually been paved. So that road is probably one of the most checked Keeps. off roads that we have. Oh, right really? Now. They've, they've cut out and fixed yeah, all the yeah, they, they made, they made all the cuts, right that, um, and Saturday. they repaved that, and they should have been finishing that today. Okay, good. Um, from there, then we shoot over to Pine Nook. Pine Nook is... Disaster. Yeah, that's the best way of putting it. You know, basically, from the foot of the hill... But, the easiest way of, of putting this into concept is from the foot of the hill to the top of the hill to put it back to paveable condition for shim and overlay structures to be adjusted or repaired or replaced as needed, drainage installed coming down the hill somewhere between 800000 and a million dollars. Mm -hmm. Ballpark. Just that just doesn't include stabilize. the dirt section. The right. Dirt sections, it's 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 a whole nightmare all by itself in different areas. Right. Um and then uh whopping roads, you know, we continually have that problem there. You know, yes. the, the 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 culvert that goes underneath five and ten is super undersized. Right. And and obviously you can 
you can see by the water that was coming in. I've never seen water like that. That was um, unbelievable. Running, running across. It, it was absolutely insane. That was you know, insane. Um, I'm glad we have video of that. Oh, I got a ton of video of that. I can't believe how that was like um, a lake. You know, and then you got Depot Road. You got problems up on Depot Road. You got some drainage there. Right at the bottom of Depot Road, that's where all the water from Eagle Brook and everybody else, or, or right. I shouldn't say Eagle Brook, but all of Pine Nook comes down, right. you know, and some of the other farmers. That all feeds in that corner right there. Right. You know, it feeds across okay on, on the east side of Wapping, but it does not do a good job going from the east side to the west side, which is right there at the at pipe the corner. where at yeah. the corner. Because it um, all comes out of that corner, out of exactly. the woods. And, and it just, just blows across because blows right it, it, it can't get through. So right. if we can make that repair, that's what we're looking at. Realistically, um, the the culvert that goes between whopping and 5 and 10, which is now covered partially, yeah. that whole thing should probably be replaced because yeah. that it's, 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 it's in a, failure state. It's already had sinkholes in it. Right. Um, again, you know, I'm just trying to identify all the things that are, that are really bad. And the storm made all of them even worse. Should that be open, do you think? I'm sorry? Should we open that? For you know, that would probably be the easiest and the cheapest, to be just honest with you. It, and, just, and to be honest with you, they don't care. Right. Just as long as it handles they the water. They don't care. I mean, so, it feels like that whole thing should be opened. Uh, Kevin, where is 616 Greenfield Road? That you said have it listed here, small private lands line. I'm trying to figure that out. Which one is it? I'm sorry. 616 Greenfield Road. I'm trying to figure out where that is. Five and ten, right? Yeah, it's five and ten. It's four Greenfield. Yeah, it's four uh, Greenfield. It's past. Yeah. Okay. So looking at the, just looking at. Uh, Pachurik spreadsheet, 616, private, small, landslide, private, uh, whatever it oh. is, DA fixed it. Okay. Okay. From from what I see here. All right. Because um, I, I don't remember that one. Okay. So then you've also got, uh, let's see, so we took care of that. Pleasant Ave, Pleasant Ave is obviously a nightmare. Yes. Um, you know, we've got drainage in there that that fails continually. And it it's, it's not from debris. It's from silt. I mean, silt. it just gets silted in so bad that we it, it's it does. We need to seriously look at everything that we have. And if we can get a full study to go through, um, we need we need settling ponds. I'm yeah. sorry. I, you know, I know. there's I, I'm not an engineer by any means, but the bottom line is, is is it's common sense, you know, if we can go ahead and get this water to A, slow down, B, go into an area, if it's in the area, settles down, the silt has an opportunity to, quote unquote, settle in the pond. Yeah. Um, that's why it's a settling pond. And then from there, then it can leach out and go down. And then if you have to have two or three, then you have to have two or three. But the bottom line is, if you do that, we need to make sure that we have a maintenance program to go along behind it. Right. Because if we just put them in and say, put your hands up, well, you're going to be in trouble in yeah. another 10, 15 years. Well, every time we clean Wapping Road, it like it fills up the next oh, rainstorm. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I mean that's, that's, we it's, scoop it's it all out. It doesn't have to be regular. No, it's just it a regular rain. rain. So yeah. it just, I mean, we, we've removed rest. hundreds of thousands of cubic yards I know. just from that corner. Right. Well, what the state geologist told me after Irene was that the hillside is going to, in the next hundred years, that whole hillside is going to the river. So well, I'm picking it up a little bit at a time. Yeah. yeah. So we're seeing so it happen. It's 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 that that's that whole section of the road is really brutal. Plus, I've got some cross sections over there that need to be replaced too. Right. Um. Again, you know, they there was it was the water was too much for them. It took it it took them out. Um. It's such a 90 degree turn there. It just, it's not natural. You know, it comes out of that yard right. by Savage's house and right. it just hits that 90 degree right. and pulls exactly. out every time. I was thinking maybe like cement blocks. Well, there. that's one of the things that we talked about is, is when we were out there with CONCOM, you know, we, we tossed the idea at him say, Hey, you know, would you be okay if we went ahead and armored this corner right here, putting in um, those small uh, blocks like we have with the transfer yeah. station. And yeah. then once take one completely bury one in the ground right and then and then build from there you only have to go up one more because they're about three feet so i'd give yeah. you three feet of coverage but then you'd have to do something on the inside some type of a urethane or something just to yeah make it help go around the corner so that way it, 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 it it's got more of an opportunity right. um you know the other part of it is, is is if it gets too much you may end up having to shrink that side of the road up a little bit and yeah. and put another set of blocks behind it just right. to give better blocking and yeah. or you know drill it pin it something i mean there's so many things you can do uh, yeah um but like you said you know the problem is every time we get a super heavy rain i mean it, it's 
that entire thing floods out and, and it's there all the way to the candy kitchen. Yeah. And then once it hits the candy kitchen, it gets plugged up a little bit yeah. and then it gets to uh, the five and 10, five and 10. I mean, realistically that that's supposed to be a 36 inch pipe. And if you've got 10 inches of that pipe showing for flow, yeah. I'd, I'd be surprised. Right. Um, very similar to like what we did over at the one further down, we cleaned out on both sides that of it. Well, and, and then as soon as that happened, we got some good rains. And yeah. The rains actually flushed their line. Yeah, exactly. Which was, which was pretty much what we're looking to do is yep. we're looking for flow. Right. Um, with that being said, while we're still talking in that area, you know, we still need to reestablish where we were because of all the silt that's come down right. to what we did two years ago. Yeah. You know, so between five and 10 and, and, uh, the new mill village road yes because if we don't then we're going to be right back to where we're right exactly the, and this is where the just this, this is where our bundled noi comes into play yeah i'm very happy that that we move forward through this talking with Pete law um he basically said you know we, we need to look at it and and adjust it as needed um yep. you know obviously you know we i just can't make changes and say and sure. that's what i'm gonna do right you know make changes goes in front of the board they make the decisions on on the yay or the nay and we move forward from there yeah one of the things that i want to bring up is and i'm not i'm not good with the names of the roads yet yeah. but there's um the road that goes maybe it's whopping maybe it's 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 a road that runs parallel to route five and there are drainage ditches on all along it that's silt whopping. Up, that's whopping. that's that's soaked up immediately and yep. we need to have several paths for water to come off there right. because what's happening now is it's all channeling down to one place right it needs yep. to be you know we need to have multiple culverts right yeah and we, that's well, can we can we let's let Kevin finish yeah, and then yeah. then we'll talk about this yeah. 604 B. 604 yeah yeah the, the, so so that kind okay. of takes care of that area again you go up the hill you're talking you're looking at pleasant Ave. pleasant Ave has got its issues there we need yeah. to put in a couple of drop inlets um, and and move the water a different direction. You get up to the top of the hill just before the railroad tracks on the left hand side. You yep. know we did some work there two three years ago, but needs a little bit of tune up. Yep. Um, going up the hill as soon as you get into steam mill again, like we said, if you continue down steam mill on the right hand side, somewhere in the vicinity of number fourteen, uh, this is the one that would rear its ugly head today. Um, again, that's probably about 20, 25 feet wide and probably about 30, 35 feet deep. It looks like the structure itself, the water structure is, is perfect. Um, but it may, it might've been undersized because okay. the structure itself looks decent, but just next to it, the road's gone. All, oh. all the materials completely Is that gone. fairly new? That was just, that was, I just, I found that one today. Wow. Cause we were up there so, after the storm and it, yeah. it must've just, yeah, I, I don't know. Sorry. Where is that again? Okay. Um, so if you go, mill. you know where Pleasant Ave is. Yeah. Okay, you go over the railroad tracks, you go up to the top of the hill. Yeah, you're talking you're, about that, the one you talked about earlier, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, the yeah, one okay. on the right hand side. Yeah. I, I just didn't hear the name. Yeah. So so now, so now, so now you're there. Obviously, we've still got the one that's that's further in. That's that the culvert that needs right. that needs some attention. So now let's turn back around and we're gonna head north and we're gonna go over county road. Yeah. So as soon as you get onto county road. Right there by uh, uh, Rooka's house mm -hmm. at the base of Eagle Brooks driveway for their maintenance area. Yeah, I've got a sinkhole there that we've been chasing for a little bit. Um, there's got to be a coupling or something that's bad. Uh, right now, I've got a sinkhole that's probably three and a half, four feet deep and probably about four and a half, five feet in diameter. Okay. Um, and, you know, we filled it, you know, it was good for a while. We, we need to cut that. We need to go back. We need to dig back probably at least 15, 20 feet. And then reevaluate at that point in time whether whether we continue to replace or whether we're able to because you're able to see partially inside the pipe itself and it looks like we got a a, a failure at one of the couplings yeah um and i believe that's where all the material is going down this through. is before the uh culvert you did replace that is correct okay because that handled it well oh, that storm that's you did phenomenal. a very good job yeah on i'm that. really happy with that yeah very lucky that didn't yeah. wash out but just before that on the right you've got i actually be on the left on the left. On the okay. left. So it's, it's Rutka's house. It's one of the side. last one of the houses on the left before you've got that open, like open field where there's like that septic system. Yes. Right, yeah. right there. Okay. Um continuing down again, like you said, you know, that one right there, that one held up like a champ. Yeah. Uh, I, I was ecstatically happy with that. Cause when I came up, I'm coming around, I'm seeing all the other devastation. I'm like, oh God, what's this look like? <laughs> um and <laughs> I come around the well. corner, I was like, wow, cool. It worked. So yeah, we yeah we had a win. Okay, not many. Because it's we had like Kevin, we had a win on Mill Village. 
Yep. Both of those culverts were put in post Irene. Right. Yep. And they yeah. were fine. You, so, so, we, so we've done pretty they well there. Whole bottom culverts. Right? So that pretty much, and then that brings you to Pine Nook. And then we've already talked about, we already talked about Keats, right? Yep. Okay. So let's go further north, and we're going to talk McCullen Farm Road, north yep. end. Um, that whole area dropped down. The farmers needed to be able to get in there because they needed to be able to spray because, yeah. you know, they, they've been devastated with so many other fields. If they didn't spray, they were going to lose that field. And um, so, you know, too, uh, right? basically we got Gilmore Gilmore yeah. just happened upon and I'm like what are you doing yeah he, he goes great. why what do you need I was like here's my problem fix it make it go yeah. away and he did a great and he did. job he yeah does, he, he did a great right job I'm statically happy with Very his work grateful. we still got some work to do in there you know we were able to go ahead George over in Sunland was gracious enough to give us multiple loads of yeah. of uh um, millings yeah uh, which basically will eventually make that almost like asphalt right It'll pack um, you know because you get some good hot days and that's all compacted in it, it's almost like just having fresh pavement that's so great. It, it's good stuff and it should hold up you know we thought about we went a little further we talked about it we looked at it we put in some more waterways to make sure that we weren't going to have any blowouts or hopefully won't have any more blowouts you know again the, the thought process is to reduce the velocity if you're going to reduce the velocity but you know a lot of people say well you reduce the velocity with, with stone okay well yeah that's okay to a point but then if it's an area that you have to worry about am i going to get siltation in there whole nine yards trying to dig stone out again after you've already put it in there that's oh, a little nightmare very hard you know yeah. so you so you have to be cautious on what materials you're using where yeah um so that brings us to river road yeah uh river road again multiple issues the 717 um we're still trying to get a real good eyes on that i got the over guard rail mower there the other day we cleaned it out um jim's tree service should be rolling in there tomorrow to take what's left of those multiple trees that it are down fell in there down on the river so side. we can actually see what's going yeah. on right there yeah um from there uh well right right at that spot i looked at that the other day as well and um you know we've got all that stuff coming down from eagle brooks like it's the road that goes up to their property right and so um we had talked about and i don't know if this happened but we talked about when that comes off diverting it to the left and bringing it down to that first slip that we had on the mm -hmm. right side but we haven't dug out along the or maybe we haven't it's filled in but along the hillside on the west side of that river road to try and get it in there they so did it, that a year ago there's sub drain in there and it's filled right up yeah. it's rock i mean yeah, it's, it's solid. because it, and basically it's because super saturation everything yeah. just we've got to find right a way down. to dig that deeper and put oh rock so up. let's so it, are you so that that's not actually 717 717 oh, is oh, yeah. 717 is much farther north yeah it's not um, where it uh, by then. the uh, uh sportsman's club yeah where it ponded right okay uh i mean you brought me there that day it was the all rose, ponded the rose. oh no 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 i didn't know that one that one that day oh okay yeah no we drove by it yeah okay. yeah no we didn't yeah i had no didn't idea. see that one but now we do we yep yep yeah yeah that, right. that's that's a really big the way one too. They, the way they have it the road has really got a crown a really serious crown yeah. and it's almost like you know you you would have wanted to push it towards the left so they would channel into something right right now it just flows right through and washes out yeah i saw all those trees piled up that were cut down and yeah it's 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 crazy down there and it's very deep yeah that's the one that john was talking about 80 feet deep correct yeah you know so now go further south and then you've got the one that you're speaking of mm -hmm. which is like you said is coming down the hill and you know if we can take them if we can take it and split it that's that's going to be the key but what the problem was is whatever they had in there before uh, as a diversion of their water failed dramatically yeah and and is i mean i i had probably a foot and a half of material going running across the road is that 555 river road no that's 5 26. 26. okay so in 520 555 is another one 555 is fixed oh, 555, 555 is, is we were able to locate it Clean and then we were able to jet it so okay. we didn't have to okay. you didn't have to put pump a new pipe you, you were talking correct. about pushing a new pipe through but you uh, correct. we were able okay. to jet it so we got out of that for about four grand that's great so mm -hmm. which is a lot better than taking yeah. up the road but it's yeah. still listed on one of these as a culvert replacement right but we but, didn't have to yeah um and it, would it, it be uh i mean in the in the best in, possible in the, in world the future would it, um 
Yes, but then you do that in, in, in part. Part of the problem I have in that area right there is you've got two brand new houses. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of stuff that was taken down that used to absorb all the water and or slow the water down. Right. Uh, water is being diverted in different areas compared to what it was before. So since we've opened up this culvert that I'll be honest with you, I didn't know existed. Yeah, I truly didn't. Um, you know, they called and they complained about it. I went over there, I looked, and after I dug around for a while, I was able to find a head wall. I was like, right. there's a head wall here. So there's got to be a pipe someplace. So then I went across on the other side of the street. I spent probably 45 minutes or an hour digging around, poking. I couldn't find anything. So we finally got in there with the machine. They found it. Uh, we were able to get um, Mohawk in there um, because our machine yeah. couldn't do it. So Mohawk ended up going in there and jetting it, and they took care of that yesterday. Okay, good. So, So that's... Fixed. But now the problem is now we have to look at where that water is going. We're going to have to chase it because are we going to go ahead and we're going to affect somebody else because of what was done? I, I was just going to say, you, you move water. Every every every, yeah. every time you do something to water, you have to look to see where it's going. You know, Kevin, and who else I, is it going to affect? Kevin, I know you've been out incredibly straight, but we did have the FERCOG um, culvert study. Correct. And that was this one we we're talking about was not on the study. Okay. Right. Nobody, nobody it knew it was there. And yeah. and I know there's more of them that nobody knows there. I know. If, and that's part of our problem. Part if of you have any time to correlate between what they had in their report and our failures, right? I'd really oh sure Certainly. appreciate you yeah. to do that the, because that will give us some additional information. That stormwater asset management should capture some of this Correct. stuff, right? We're Correct. hoping yeah. to kind of list all of that stuff with this right. grant. Correct. Right. Okay. So what what I wanted to talk about next was uh, our was our plan. Yeah, let, you, you, want, you want to hear more? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. No, no, man, this is so so oh. so now so now you've come up over the top of the hill where we originally had the slip. Now you've got the other slip on the other side. Yeah, that's right. right. Um, that one right there, uh, I've got two people who have already looked at it. They're going to give us some pricing. Once again, you know, uh, Baker was in there. He was able to stabilize the road, so we weren't going to have any problems. Which road um, are we talking about again? River, this is River, still River Road. Still, um, still, still River Road. This is the That's second. the 526 River Road. Right. Uh, all right. So what was it? Um, so Baker was able to get in there. He was able to stabilize it. Once again, make it up like a little shelving. And he made like a little settling pond off to one area and he put in the stone. So we stabilized the road, but realistically that entire, that whole side is super saturated. You can see it, you can see the cracks in the ground where everything's yeah. just sliding down. You know, the trees are on it are huge. And everybody's like, well, the trees are good. Well, the trees are good. The roots and everything else are good, but all that weight is not. It's right. You know, so realistically, uh, what should happen is they're big trees and there's going to be people that probably won't be happy, but those trees need to come down, but you leave, you leave it up like six feet, seven feet and let that be part of your, your, what do you call it? Now, the only problem sometimes I have with using really big stuff is, and again, I'm talking long-term is decay. And now you're starting to have sinkholes. So again, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that I don't create an issue. I don't create a problem for the person that's following behind me. So well, that's and, and that and that's why you gotta you gotta look at the big picture when you look at everything. You just can't have tunnel vision jump and say this is exactly what we're gonna do and this is how, right. exactly how we're gonna do it. Well, it looks like right. a lot of these things, and maybe this is where Carolyn's going. Is we're gonna have EWP look at it, or... right? Right. Okay. So uh, what I wanted to do was just go over the plan and verify the locations. Number one, mm -hmm. um, emergency watershed protection money is for protection of infrastructure that is still there, not washed away, still there. And um, we have a meeting on Monday of the Northeast Conservation Districts. So we're gonna formally request of the National Association of Conservation Districts to engage their legislative arm to make sure that EWP gets funded. So what I need us to do is to have a number for, um, so we need to go over these locations and, and figure out what, what ones are we submitting to EWP? Because we've already submitted the letter locally to, the, to Massachusetts um, NRCS, the request for assistance. So Kevin, you, we're gonna do Pine Nook. Yep. Okay, so Pine Nook and um, Little Meadow Road. Correct. Oh, yeah, that was the other one I left off the list. Sorry about that. That's all right. I forgot that one. That that's that, and that's 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 
infrastructure critical. Yep. Um, and then we were going to try for those, what locations on River Road? Were we going to do the two landslide places on River, River I, Road? I, that would be my opinion. Correct. Yeah, okay. 526, 717. But again, you know, you, you got to pick which ones you want to go to or, or actually to be honest with well, you, I'd like to show them all. Oh, no, yeah, I mean, no. I think we should have those for sure. Right. But now the new ones on Lower Road, what, what do you think? Was that, what, what's causing that landslide, those landslide locations? Um, tons of water over a super long period of time. I mean, because realistically, uh, you know, the town doesn't normally go in and add to people's embankments, per se. Um, again, I think a majority of the problem was trying to picture, every, everything I'm was trying to super picture, saturated. I'll, I'll have to go home that way tonight. I mean, I go down there tonight because um, I'm I'm just trying to picture. You have to have the um, the water. The water is is just is it weeping because it's super saturated, or is there really a, a river course at all, or a water course? Which place on Lower Road? On Lower Road, um, the ones I'm thinking of off the top of my head are drain outlets. So there's metal pipe sticking out of the outlet side and then no material underneath it. Okay. All right. I think so, so it's so it's like the water is just run for years and just eventually eroded it out. Now because of all that eroded out, it had nothing to hold it there. And then when you had all the soup, you know, the super rain um just made everything so heavy. And at, at that point in time, you, you just push right down. Okay. So I would say that it's worth getting Darren davis back out there to look at those on lower road mm -hmm. i those might qualify uh and he's with i'm sorry he's with the nrcs he's a state engineer they came out do you remember uh oh yeah okay yeah yeah i met him yeah. up on yeah yeah i met him on uh kind of yeah he's a very nice man oh, oh oh super and he's super intelligent too i mean you know he's just i know he's he's really easy to work with so um <laughs> So let's let's add Laura Road to that. Um, did he driving around with you and John? Did he say any other locations that he felt were eligible? Um, I was not riding with him, so I have no idea. Okay. Uh, I only met him there on the on the hill. We walked up the hill. Um, I showed him what we had, what our thoughts were. He came up with some ideas on where they could help us and can't help us. You know, he had must have been a bunch of interns with him that day. Um, so there was a lot of discussion with them, you know, explaining to them, uh, which was a great learning experience for those guys. Um, I'm just sorry that we were the ones that had to be. The, oh, they, the they were they were conservation planners. They don't really. Bill Breed was there, and he's he's he does some of this work, but yep. the rest of them are just conservation planners. But that's okay because they were working with. Sure. In the office, they can do process paperwork. Okay, so the, the initial thing that we're going to do is we're trying to stabilize and open all the roads ourselves. Mm -hmm. But we're going to have EWP, the Emergency Watershed Protection Money, come in and do Pine Nook, Little Meadow, for sure. Those two roads, I think there's no question they qualify. Mm. Um, those are probably over a million dollars a piece once you get the engineering. They're just going to, what they're going to do is just uh, stabilize the road and protect the road. They don't do any mitigation as far as moving the water that would be different um but this will provide riffling this will try to you know prevent velocity increase and this will protect the road from washing out again so that's what we're going to do first that's done under an emergency they do the permitting and the engineering and 75 percent reimbursement um or cost of the job they cover. So we, we're on the hook for 25%. And then um, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna um, put a grant application in for the brick, which is building infrastructure, uh, uh, building resilience infrastructure in communities. That's competitive. Eagle Brook is paying for the engineering on that. Um, 
we are also at the same time, that's a September 1st opening for that, which is next month. Um, it closes in December. The problem is it's slow boat. They pick who they're gonna fund. And that's like a two or three year process. Same time, we're gonna put in for a hazardous mitigation grant, a uh, different pot of money is through FEMA MEMA. Um, we're gonna try to verify what the pot is available this year in Massachusetts. We have a good shot at that. That might be the way we end up. Again, 75% paid, um, Seems like including the engineering is 75%, but we're on the hook for 25%. That seems like the most. Um, it seems like most realistic, most attainable, right? And and you have to have a cost. Very, you have to have a cost benefit analysis for it, but you're already doing the cost benefit analysis for the brick grant, which Eagle Brook is paying for. So we'll get we'll get both of those applications done. Okay. At the same time, parallel process. This is my thought. I'm I'm. Uh, Kara Jacobson is Region 1 EPA person that handles water. And the money, federal money goes to the state, DEP, for 604B program, uh, grant, which is a planning grant, and then 319, which is implementation, 75%. Problem is it has to do, usually do impaired waterways. However, maybe we can get a a waiver and the, and Connecticut is already willing to back us on this um, so that we could get a planning grant for the entire Pocumtic Ridge. And my thought would be to do the 604B on both sides of the Pocumtic Ridge, down onto River Road and down onto Wapping Road, five and 10 that way. And the, verific and the reason why is because so much silt was going into the Connecticut River I, we have a basis for this. Um, after talk, spending a lot of time on the phone with people over the last week, uh, after Irene, we had put together Long Island Sound uh, Resource Conservation Planning Program. However, it's down, it, we had, I think we had like 14 million to start with, but um, it's down to 80,000 now and it's expiring. It was a just a one-time kind of fund to do. And it, after talking, it was administered by Connecticut for Massachusetts, Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire. It was awkward because anytime you wanted to spend money, you had to get together for meetings and all four states had to agree to it. So Connecticut is willing to back us on this waiver for the 604B and it's the most straightforward thing to do. So that's what we're gonna to try to do first before we try to do any kind of other thing. But we need to have a plan, long-term plan for River Road and down to Wapping. I, we can do all this fiddling around that you're talking about, Trevor, but honestly, we have to have a settling pond that we can clean out on a regular basis. And, and no matter what you're doing, for where? For where? Whopping, like whopping. And where you're talking about bricking up and stuff, it's it's not going to be enough. Well, it's too much, so much. In the meantime, well, there's so, just so much coming on at a 90 degree turn. We should just put some blocks there. Oh, right. But I meant it, it has to be have some kind of long term solution. So we don't own any of that land, though, is it? I, I know, but that's part of what you do under 604B is you do this design and plan and you work with landowners and you come up and then you get a 319 to actually implement it. Mm -hmm. So again, that's a three to three to four year period. But the conservation district has been willing to, um, Franklin Conservation District has been, it will be willing to administer the both 604B and the 319 if we get one. Um, so it's not done on the town because it's, it, it's report heavy, but it but it does pay for the admin like hours. Um, Debbie Shriver did one. We've done one um, on Route 47 for the town of Montague when we replaced the road. There, Route 47 was washing out. We did a bank restoration, and Debbie we hired the district hired because we're all volunteers. Um, we hired Debbie Shriver to do the 
604B and then the 319 and um, to do that restoration. And it was really successful. So I'm sure she'll be willing to work with Megan, our assistant, admin assistant, so that it can happen. Um, and it wouldn't be stressful on the town, but we'd still be able to get the grant. So, I mean, that's sort of my plan right now. I don't know if anybody else has any comments or any other ideas, but- We need to be talking with our legislatures about a about money because we got to pay oh, a lot of well, this stuff by June 30th of next year and we need some relief. There's no well, way this town can afford it. Oh, absolutely. They know we have, well, I'm going to give them the up, updated number of 4.7 million. I've been saying 4 million right, in that, right well, along yeah. just to stabilize. Yes. Yep. But we don't have numbers from the other towns and that's what's holding I know us we back. need to work on those we've had our numbers we've been on top of our numbers right from the long so Joe and Nally are gonna get us help and so that will get our roads stabilized and and That'd these are long term if we don't get any of these grants we need 18 million right okay so I'm well, that's the number that if you if we do not have grants we do not and we have to hire engineers ourselves 18 million yeah so we are at the same time going to to our delegation and saying it's been great help I mean I mean they've been extremely the supportive we need you here we need you to give us money so um I'm for the region for the region, right. And I, I feel like Joe and Natalie, you know, they came through for us in July of 21. I don't do. feel that they aren't going to move forward for us in July of 23. And they came through for our farmers. And they came through for the farmers already. But the accounting for the farmers was much easier because it was a, you knew what, you knew it was 110 farms. Yeah. It was 2,700 acres total loss. Right. Okay, so you just write it off, but they have not given away all that 20 million because there's going to be additional losses because of right. the weather, continued wet weather. Exactly. So <clears throat> they have, the, you know, the whole thing we need, they need to give us like the same idea, total, total up everybody's initial losses mm -hmm. and then give us an amount and set aside some money for us to work on yeah and if we don't get grants like the brick grant or the hazardous mitigation grant or the 604b yeah. then we've got to figure out how we're going to get the 18 million because right. kevin kevin every everything that he's doing is only temporary right. none of it i mean it and, could wash out tomorrow it could wash out on tuesday yeah we're talking about flash flooding on tuesday and my biggest my biggest fear right now is just like the amount of money going out and how, how we're going to pay for it by the 30th or get an extension or come up with that initial cash that's what i'm we not need that help. i i feel like joe and natalie will come forward for us before we have sure. to really worry about that um and and that's why i don't want taxpayers to freak out people are like how are we going to play this yes it's going to be tough yeah but we're trying to stay on top of this yeah. and make sure that we don't take this on uh it was problematic there's no question yeah. but we'll we're gonna work on it yeah. everybody's working really hard yeah. so um yeah no i mean i i just want to follow up on a couple of things one thing that senator markey told us is that uh, the federal government gave nine billion dollars to massachusetts and hopefully there's some way we can find some of that nine billion um uh, nine billion out. billion nine billion i said billion oh did yeah. you i'm nine sorry nine billion uh -huh. and I know. Some, somewhere between Boston and here, there should be 200, you know, there should be 20 or $30 million for this storm because it's all for infrastructure. Um, but uh, that's, that's as you say, we have to talk to our legislators and um, figure out how we can get them. I mean, I know, I know that Joe and Natalie would be supportive of us because uh, they are and uh, they continue to be great resources. Um, you know, unfortunately, the timing on this is they house and the senate just finished up their budget so we're gonna have to get some special budget right for well this. i'm sure it'd be a supplement yeah, yeah i agree trevor that um with working with kevin and john we need to figure out which roads we're gonna 
continue to work on and which roads have been made passable and can be maintained passable and until we get a better sense of how much money we have committed ourselves to paying for um, because we're spending the money without knowing what we're spending. Mm. Well, I, like I said, I, I'm feel reassured that uh, Joe and Natalie will get us the money, some money. Um, but the question is how much right. and, and how soon and how soon. Mm. So you were going to call Phil. I will. I'll talk try to, Conway to nail down well Conway and, and you can do this. You you know, Conway's got to come together. up, right. They have to come up with a number so that we can make sure that we are asking for appropriate funding. Right. I feel confident right along that our number, I mean, it did increase another 700,000, but Sorry. yeah, but that was keeps coming up. You know, but I feel comf very confident that our four to five million dollars is Accurate. the correct yeah. number for us to stabilize the situation. Right. And I also feel that 18 million is not too much to ask to 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 engineer correct solutions mm -hmm. for long term. Yeah, this is this is the future. So right, it is. Yeah, to engineer and install. Yeah. Um, I also I this is probably not the uh, this is not on the agenda but it's part of the storm update i just um wanted you two to know that i did make a complaint to um the department of public utilities um this on five and ten uh, the gas line was exposed um this is by keats road in the high transmission lines the gas line was exposed this is the second time it was in july of 21 and then july of 23 and I feel like it's an incredibly unsafe situation because it's a high pressure line. It's right under the transmission line. So if it breaks, I mean, that transmission line is gonna go too. So I I called and, and told them that it wasn't that Berkshire Grass did not respond and dump more rock to cover it up, mm -hmm. but they're not coming up with a long-term engineering solution for that water. The water is coming off the transmission lines, which is utility owned and the railroad, which is railroad owned. Right. And I know it's complicated because it's railroad and utilities, but guess what? They need to come up with a way to divert that water and handle that water on the other side of the road, or it will continually wash out like this, like it was on the front page of the newspaper. Yeah. And so I just wanted you to know that I, I did make that complaint. They did assign an investigator. It is out. They are out looking at it. They've already looked at it. I met with the guy. I walked up and down, pointed sure. up with him. He asked us a bunch of questions. He said, you know, he said, do you have any uh, exposures? I said, yeah, we had exposures here, here, and here. I assume me, one of them, you can tell where uh, Berkshire gas went down it's by their sports complex. And you can see the hole where they end up cutting it. They terminated it. And they're going to have to run in a new line going across where that culvert blew out. That, that was Eagle Brooks culvert. Mm -hmm. um, and he was asking about more questions about going up and down the road. You know, he said, did you see anything? I was like, you know, I says, here's some pictures here. I says, you know, here's yep. your exposed, you know, here's, here's your main, here's your feeders coming off of it. You can, I can, I can see it right here. Yeah. And then you go up further. You didn't actually physically see the pipe, but you saw the, you saw this, uh, the tape, which yep. basically means you were within a foot and a half of it. Right. Um, so well, that's pine nook. Yeah. I'm talking right. about. And then, and then with all of that, because that's, that's, that's the other place. That's where he started. Yeah. And then oh, he, and okay. then he came over. So then he started asking more questions about that. So I brought right. him in on basically what I knew. Now Good. the advantage is the guy that came out and did the inspection he used to work for Birch gas. Oh, nice. Oh, good. He knows, he knows the area. He knows, good. he knows the situation, that's which good. is very good. That's helpful. So the guy from DPU is the one I talked to. Oh, perfect. Right. He, he was really nice on the oh, phone. Nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. He was really nice on the phone. And I told him it wasn't that they didn't respond right. and that they covered it up. But I said, it's just a temporary thing until the next rainstorm yeah, that we exactly. have. You have to be able to deal with the water mm -hmm. coming down. Okay. And we, so. And I think the other major issue is like that whole brook that comes down Pine Nook Road goes into an old kind of revised culvert that goes underneath the railroad and comes out on the other side but that's a long ways underground and my fear all that sediment that's at the bottom 
the next big rainstorm is can pack that thing full and then it's oh, then it's going underneath the railroad again so um the archway how, how the cars come in so i know that there was you know that was the original then there was an extension and a raise up and there's all these different elevations it gets kind of crazy there but that needs to be looked at long term to be, figure out how we get that that's how, how, how the railroad's got to deal with that well it's it's pretty simple now we took out everything that belonged to us and the only thing that's left is theirs that's right so if there's a problem now we pick up the phone and say you know you have a problem right. with your culvert nothing to do with the town yeah here's the pictures on 3383 of 2023 yeah absolutely beautiful opened up nice and clean yeah your responsibility all that now debris is just going to pack that exactly thing. I know. I mean, they, they were decent about you know uh, the the safety guy that i was talking with i think his name was glenn yeah i want to say it was probably that saturday um he was able to bring us in like five six loads of stone because he's what do you need yeah. i said at the very least i said let's work together i said i gotta get the water out of the road i said you're killing me here right you know so um but unfortunately it took us two days i know to find a lot of digging two days of digging you know and there's still a ton of material there that we yeah. have to move someplace and do something exactly good. The, so you're talking it's, about the uh the the overpass the underpass the, the arch, arch railroad right yeah, yeah. I mean, it's right. clear that there needs to be a larger um higher oh, yeah. you know uh culvert that right. is just slightly lower than the roadway so that when that that whole area fills up it's basically a siltation pond correct um is what it it should be yeah and, and when it fills up, there's there needs to be another outlet so that it doesn't overtop the road. Right. Well, unfortunately, that's what it does. It goes over the top right. of the road, you know. And 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 I'll give. Uh, oh God, I feel bad because I feel I I can't remember her name, but right there at the bottom of of as soon as you go underneath the bridge heading mm -hmm. like at five and ten, right? Uh, Mrs. Shaw, the one down at the bottom. Yeah. Okay, so so here's some people that are are complaining that they've got three inches of water in their garden. <laughs> you know, and, and throwing a hissy fit about it. And now here's Mrs. Shaw down there. She's standing on her porch. Water is literally lapping, lapping on her shoes. Hi. Yeah. How's it going? Guys, need anything? Uh, Just an amazing people, woman. You know, yeah. absolutely super. And so what I'm trying to get at for that one is, is we need to make sure we armor that corner because otherwise we're going to slam her again. Yeah. You know, because when she said it, it's, and it all, when we fix it, it's got to get fixed, and it's it, going to get, get fixed right. And it all goes into Antonellis' farm there. I mean, it's just yeah, and then and then from there, then then that's what all goes and tries to go underneath Depot Road. That's right. So Comes you're, so you're taking corner. all of that water plus Antonellis is the whole nine yards, and you're trying to put it through an 18 inch pipe. Right. Just and then not. and then and then go through and then go through a culvert that goes to a backstop, and then which goes settles out you know that's, it's that's just why all we the have bouncing that. ball and it's it's it's, it's another that whole engineering that's that's has, why it has to be engineered yeah um okay so yeah. well, is there any other questions for, your for kevin in the last couple of weeks has been kevin, I'll, I'll be honest with you hey saturday that saturday after i'm standing at the bottom of pine nook and county road and i'm just kind of looking back and forth going what a what am I going to do? I know. And I felt sorry for myself for about 25 seconds. I said, all right, suck it up. <laughs> Deal with it. And then we continue to march. And here we are. It's a great team with so, with Chief and yeah, uh, right. and you and, and the crews. And and I can't thank our local contractors enough. Exactly. Colcott, Colcott Davenport, Davenport, Morosky. Morosky. You know, they were all just Baker. Baker. Baker came in and helped us out. They were Mass wonderful. West. And they were just Gilmore. Yeah. I mean, yeah, again, Gilmore. Gil, uh, Matt Gilmore. He was just kind of a. He just met he, us on the. He, he just met us on the road. The time it he was like he us just over. It. But it was yeah. great for me. Yeah, you know? and and he does he does fantastic work. I've always been ecstatically happy yeah. with his work. He did a great job. Very great job. I, so. I I'm. It's been a lot of work. Everyone's yeah. really tired. But um, we're getting there. I mean, yep. it's you know, unfortunately, we still got stuff that's closed. You know, we still have a lot of stuff, and in in the part that that's. That gets me not just the storm damage part, but now I have just been put back on all of my projects. Mm -hmm. Anything that I plan on doing this summer is now backlogged until next year. It's gone. I know. So, which makes me even further behind, which I was behind before. You know, so I mean, and I understand the fact that you know you're never going to catch up, you're never going to get ahead. But you know, if you can try and be proactive where you can, maybe you can stop some of the others. Mm -hmm. You know, and maybe it may not be so big when you get to it um again one of the last ones I'll, I'll stop on is just you know i know a lot of people are like you know you gotta dredge your brook you gotta dredge your brook you know well that's all fine and well one two permits are absolute nightmare 
on three. I got it kind of into our bundled NOI, but there's still a lot of things, negotiations that need to be going back and forth. But here's one of the real bottom lines. When you think about liability all the way across the town, hypothetically, if we go from the beginning of wherever the water starts and we end at the Waitley line and we clean it out and we flood Waitley, guess what? Yeah. Town of Deerfield, we're liable for everything that we just did to them. So if we took out roads and we took out their farming, we took out this, we took out that because we caused the water to go there. Realistically, if you want to dredge or restore or whatever, start in Hatfield at the, at the Connecticut River and make your way up. Well, it's the only way to do it Kevin, properly, which you can't you know dredge. never going to happen. Let's clarify language. You cannot dredge. Right. We have not been able to dredge since right. 1985. Restore the original stream right. bed conditions. And the other thing about it is that you know, there is some connection between the Bloody Brook and the water table, but the water table's rising for other reasons that have nothing to do with the Bloody Brook. Right. And dredging the Bloody Brook's not going to solve the problem because when you have a storm like we had, you get eight inches in th less than three hours, you know, it's going to flood. It's just yeah. going to flood. And if you live in a low-lying place, you're going to be flooded. And um, dredging the brook is an easy, simplistic thought that people often bring up on places like Deerfield now and they're not engineers and they don't know what they're talking about. Right. So in, in, in one and last one, I'll go on that one. Please stop throwing things in the brook. I know. Please. There was we, there was one section I actually stopped for one person and I'm, I'm I'm watching him. I'm like, I looked at him. He's making cuts and he's throwing in the brook. I'm like, what are you doing? And he goes, well, I just went ahead and I took out stuff in front of the brook. I said, so you can put it back in front of it again? I said, cut it out. I said, don't make me come back again. I said, you're not going to be happy if I do. So, but that was like Saturday afternoon after. It was one day. But anyway, so long story short. Well, thankfully, the the rain that occurred wasn't two miles south and Bloody Brook did not flood right. into oh, yeah. people's houses. It would have been a disaster if this had happened. We did have some problems here in town. You know, we, we had to know, place one on Green Street. So not care of that. the same, not the same volume of problems. If that water had been two two miles south, if we had that amount of water here in town. <laughs> we would have, it yeah, would have been devastating. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And so, uh, we're going to still work on Bloody Brook. We have Furcog is doing a watershed plan. We are working with the conservation district to clean up along the brook uh, invasives. And we're working with the conservation district on that. I mean, uh, conservation commission on that, but we haven't gone to them because we haven't had the watershed plan yet. But this, hopefully by next year, we'll be moving on that. Kevin, I have a question for you. I mean, even with all of the undersized um, culverts that are up above whopping and so forth, mm -hmm. in my estimation, looking at the culverts that are under Route 5 and 10, they're too low. Correct. And they're not big enough. Correct. So if we were right. able to replace, get Mass DOT to replace the culvert right next to Richardson's and the culvert that's closer to Bittersweet with open bottom culverts that approach the, bo the bottom of the roadway so that they're a foot below the roadway instead of three or four feet below the roadway, a lot of that water could flow across into that basin Correct. that used to be the Savages Farm area and it would act as a, a receptacle for excess water. And so I think a lot of things would clear up a lot faster. Oh, I agree. So we really need to press District 2 to say, look, replace this now. Right. It's going to keep you from coming out here constantly. In the five or 10 years, it's going to take you to reach this far down on Route 2. You're going to save yourself a lot of money Correct. if you come and do this now. Because my understanding is they're supposed to be redoing that road from Child's Cross to the Greenfield line. Um, I do know, and I probably said it before, that I've sent multiple videos to the state because there is actually a, a, a tip number that mm -hmm. belongs to that. Yep. So I've attached that and I sent it to the engineers out there because it's still only at like 25%. And I said, hey, look, hey, look at all the drainage you got, and the drainage problems. You know, you're, you're only 25%. You better start thinking about some because otherwise you're going to have a nightmare here. And we talked very specifically, and I showed them a ton of pictures right. of five and ten being completely done over. Um, I think one of the um, uh, Greenfield Recorder one where where the person just about got into the accident uh, because they hit it at such a high speed. Granted, their fault for going so fast, but right. the other side of the coin is you shouldn't have had four and a half feet of water crossing the road. Um, and and crickets, mm -hmm. you know, not not even a response saying thank you for 
giving me information. Well, just what clear. we did in um, July of 21, Tim, is we had Joe, um, Kevin had a meeting um, and we had a meeting afterwards with Joe Comerford and um, Natalie Blay, and they agreed that they would be, Mass DOT would be upgrading. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And doing it. As, yeah. But. It's just, you know, in the five or 10 years between now and then. Uh, I know. They're mm. going to spend the same amount of money if they just came out, here, probably more because there'll be 10 years of inflation. Exactly. If they just came out and fixed them now. I know then this problem will go away. And the other thing is those gas lines, you know, that's an absurd place to have gas lines. I mean, I know they they don't really have any choice, right. but, you know, you put your gas lines in a place that historically erodes. It just doesn't make any sense. We have the same problem right there, like you said, just below bittersweet because we exactly. end up having to, because originally when we were trying to restore that area in there, um, we weren't really sure where the gas main was. And when right. we actually looked, um, they were like, yeah, it's uh, 32 inches below established stream bed. And it was like 1967. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, cool. How about going off of like maybe a head wall or something? It's not going to move. Right. So physically, we ended up going in there with the gas company, with waiters, and we hand dug to physically put our hands on the gas main yeah. took all of our measurements off of the head wall. So at least now we can locate it again. Right. But like you said, I mean, it's, 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 it's in up. the way it is, you know, yeah. it is in the way of drainage. No <laughs> doubt about it. Yeah. It's in, it's in a critical place where historically this is where you have damage yeah. and you're putting infrastructure in there. It makes no sense. Right. You know, if, if they're going to, if they're going to add one more, one more quick area that they could add in, that would probably save them dramatically is, is, between Bittersweets yes. and and the Deerfield Sadly. Country Store, yep. where that little right there at the yes. corner, yep. if they were go, if they were to go ahead and blow that right across, and that way it would get back into the other. You know, not saying that putting it into their cornfield because you don't want to ruin mm -hmm. that, right. but it's very easily it can bring right back down to to the exactly. watershed where it would normally go anyway. Because then right. you take that brook that comes right by Savage's house right across the road and we're right out across. There you go. Right Thank you for seeing it. my vision. It's perfect <laughs> for that. No, I've been looking at that. It's, you know, uh, I mean, because you, it, it's almost creating the stream bed already when yeah. you look at oh, oh yeah, it, oh, hands it, down, that whole road and everything. It's, wow. it's, it's where the water's supposed to go. What was it's where, where it wants it went. to go. You can't tell water what ago. to do. You right. can ask it. You can you can you can recommend. You can kind of shove it yeah. away, but you're not going to tell it what to do because it's going to go. Work it's going to find a way. Yeah, uh, that's why we have a study that would yeah. make it. That would engineer, make that would be it would problem. engineer it yeah. correctly. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. The watershed study needs to be done. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, um, Kevin. Thank All you, Kevin. Yep. Yeah, Casey has her hand up. So you have... Before he walked out the door. <laughs> <laughs> Um, would the board consider making their motion of authorization of emergency spending of up to 4.706 million as a result of flash flooding on July 10th, 16th, and 21st? Did we did we authorize a number yet, Casey? No, you have not. That's why okay. I asked. Then I would make that motion that we authorize um, emergency spending up, up to 4 million seven oh six. Four million seven hundred six thousand. Seven hundred six thousand. Mark, just please don't spend that much. I oh, know. <laughs> we said authorize up to. Thank you. <laughs> I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? No. Um, we're going to get uh, Rocky to help us pay for it. No. Yes. <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> yeah, you lose change. <laughs> Take a collection. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Thank you. Um, Casey, would you be sure to let Joe and Natalie's office know that we voted authorization up to 4.76 yes. million yes, today? I will. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. And, Thank and you the here. latest and the latest update of listing the numbers from yeah, from okay. John. So okay. it would probably be good if I sent them the list that Yes, please. Okay. Please. Right. Yeah. Um, they need to know the lit update, and then I, and I just don't. We, is, okay. Will we send the the list that John John's got an electric file that that has several tabs in it? 
Yeah. Do that's the one you're. Okay. Is that you the one you're talking about? Yeah, because this one's too okay. confusing. Yeah, it is. No. They're all over the we place. Need the one, yeah. We need the one that John has that compiled. That captures everything. That yeah. captures, right. Okay. All so the locations, all, all the locations. The Excel spreadsheet or printed in a format that they can look, see all right. those tabs. The, it's probably I, easier if I try it with the Excel, but if they need it, and just And just make sure that the two new locations on Lower Road are on there. I'll try. I think they're there. Okay. Just check with him before I do it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Um, All right. Uh, so then the next item on the agenda is the police department HVAC system. Okay. I feel like oh. we're, we just need to move forward with this. I mean, it, we, if we had another five years down the road, we'd love to take the building down and do something else. But in the meantime, I think we're here. Okay. Do we have another choice? See, this is what I don't understand. Um, and let me see when these things, I got to look at this email trail. Um, it's so explaining it, about 190 is, is the average is going to be about the bid for the project. Yeah. I mean, the, the, I'm not sure which way I'm supposed to be reading. This is the one from Casey, the first one. And then it goes down through this thing and it ends was, up at the bottom. It was the e other way around. There's an, it's the other way. I think it's the other way around. It's an email between um, Andrea and the engineer kind of just telling, asking for more of a succinct summary of the right. project and what the actual cost is. Right. And, yeah. um, and hopefully when they go through bidding, they'll find ways to kind of pull that number down. Um, but that, you know, from the yeah. last time to this time, this is really kind of what needs. I think that's why Jamrog didn't bid it the first time because he felt like this wasn't really laid out right. It was going to be a lot more money. Yeah, and you know, the only other thing, the only other thought I have, it, mm. basically, this this is it's got a number here, and from my perspective, there should be an RFP that says this is what we want to do right and the number should come later it won't yeah it won't and, be in the rfp the yeah. number won't be in there it's and, just giving us authorization right and the because other it hits a certain threshold right time. yeah no i get that but i'm and the other thing i was going to say is that we have a tie-in bond engineer on the energy committee who designs these kinds of systems and it would be interesting for him to look at this mm -hmm. and see what he says about it um because he's a volunteer and he works for free and it would be right up his wheelhouse to at least let him look at it and says, yeah, this, this is, this engineer has identified all the problems mm -hmm. um, before we write an RFP and find out that there's a different solution. Um, I would, uh, I would be interested in saying, um, you know, Jay Curtis, could you look at this in the next two weeks? If you can fine. if you can't, um, okay, we'll move ahead. It, I'm okay with him looking at it too. It's just a resident kind of and and his expertise to look at it. But it, I don't want to create another like. Yeah, I'm just putting saying somebody that, involved with something. No, We've no, already I, hired I, an engineer and all that stuff to do. Right. But it's always good to have a second set of eyes. Right. Sure. I mean, yeah. it would be one thing if I'm saying, you know, Tim Hilchey, uh, I've built a house before. I want to look <laughs> at this and determine that this is nonsense. Right. But this is what this person does for a living, yep. you know, for one of the biggest engineering firms around here. And he is on our energy committee. And part of this is letting the energy committee provide us advice mm -hmm. that we don't, none of us have the advice, the, the, the ability to advise that, like he does. He may not have the time and he may not be unwilling to do it, but right. it just seems like yeah, as long as it this, this work's not going to happen this year. There's no way it's going to happen this year, right? It would if we get the bid out in a within the next few weeks, we could plan for it to be the spring. Yeah. The yeah. issue is is the longer it takes, yeah. the because there are certain requirements to deal with the building in terms right. of the procurement process. Right, exactly. Um, I don't honestly know. I mean, the reason that we went these engineers, that's what they specialize in. Right. Um, and we do have a contract with uh, right. the company that revised our specs yeah mm -hmm. so it's a time frame thing every yeah. week you wait yeah, no I, pushes pushes your bid process back. i think we just move forward with okay we're, we're good with the not good with it but we accept the funds that are going to be needed that we were going to cover with arpa and um get, you know start the process moving and since we've got some time if he has any pointers on it happy to listen to him mm -hmm. yeah i mean yeah. It, it, it's fine I, it, what i would like to do is 
get whatever electronic uh, information that is about this engineer's findings. I don't know if that's Andrea or if that's you. No, I have this. Yeah, okay. the big spec. yeah she's yeah. got the, I think, 207 pages or something. Yeah, and we don't need to print it out. We could just, you know, um, if you could send it to me, I'll forward it along to him and ask him to do it. I mean, and if he says I can't do it, then we'll have an answer. Right. Um, okay. So we've already we've already put a certain amount of what was it? We 100? put a certain amount of we money. We put a hundred down. Yeah. Hundred thousand of of um, ARPA money. Yep. And we're going to find ninety thousand somewhere else, right? I your know. ARPA funds that's, for your own source. That's the only Otherwise, source. Otherwise, you have to money. go back to town meeting. Time. We have to use our ARPA money. Okay. So we don't have to use the ARPA money, but you're saying we're going to allocate it from something we've already allocated the ARPA money to and take it away from that and put it towards this. Yeah. Yeah. So we've already right. I don't know what the, the bulk we put towards the 1888 right. building, right? Or something like that. So yeah. All right. Well, we, we have, have really projects in place. Yeah. The number around this, nobody anticipated it being this expensive. And to some extent, the town can't control that. Um, there's other that. factors. Yeah, I understand that. But well, yes, this this was actually prior to Tim's sitting on the board. Um, this was approved via the capital improvement review process. Only for a hundred, though. Yeah. Only for a hundred, because at that point we didn't yeah. know it was going to turn into we thought that a much be more enough. expensive project. And maybe I mean, they, again, maybe important. when the bidders come through, they go, "Hey, we could do this. We could do that." you know but we'll see yeah well i just want everybody to know that asking another engineer to review this will slow down the process no we're not no, slowing no, down the no, process not, not oh, but down. Tim's asking well, we're not slowing down Curtis the process is. process is moving having along. To, asking him to, to look at it and say yes this is a logical thing to do right that's not it's that's not, not the same thing as re-engineering and, and look you know engine. let's get honest uh you know we, everything here gets delayed you know yeah. um i'm still wondering if um, you know, the SCEMS directors posted, or if the planning department thing is posted. Um, so, you know, two weeks delay on a $90,000 expenditure is not a big deal to me. Well, no, it's just a deadline question. So, um, so if, let every, me, if, let if me Carolyn and Trevor are happy to send this forward, then I'm fine with yeah. that. Let's I, just I think it. it's not. I don't, don't really think it's choice. It, we can move it forward, but we can at the same time have Jay just look at it. Yeah, I'm not saying I, I don't, don't put this out until Jay looks at it. I'm saying it's going to take it. that long to get it posted and get some right. traction on it anyway. Right, and we don't have to accept if we if Jay has some pointers on this. Right, we don't have to accept the bids, but I want to move forward as yeah. soon as we can. So I'm fine with that. So do we need a motion? Yes. Why don't you make a motion? Why don't you make a motion or Trevor? Okay. I make a motion that we move forward on the police department HVAC um, for, do you want us to do 190 or do you want us to do 200? Might give you a little leeway for 200. Up to $200,000. And I would like to see um, Jay Curtis have a chance to look at this, just peruse it as a side. Second. Nothing to do with the motion. Right. I'll second the motion to move forward. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Gulp. Ness, aye. <laughs> Every, all of us are reluctant. We think this is way too much, but not, not much we can do. Um, we don't have any le letters of support that I know of. Um, Leary Lot, any, Chris, any updates on the Leary Lot? Oh. Uh, nothing much as of yet. I did have a meeting with a key stakeholder yesterday um, who owns some abutting property, um, had a good conversation, agreed with a lot of the consensus um, that green space and privacy for the abutting residents is uh, of the utmost importance. Um, and talked about some design specifics that I'm going to be bringing to Jeff Squire next time I meet with him, which I'm hoping for next week. Um, and looking forward to the continued meeting on the 21st. And okay. That's about it. Thank you. Um, Trevor, did you have something you want? For appointments, the next item, um, uh, we have two, possibly two um, residents interested in serving um, for us to appoint to the 
one of them to appoint one person to the Deerfield Elementary School Committee um, to fill the vacancy um, oh. left. So I, I just want to let you know that I've been working kind of behind the scenes trying to find somebody to fill that spot okay. just until the next election. Can we do it for next meeting? Yeah, I'm hoping we can do it for next meeting. I wanted to reach out to um, to the two members, see if they'll write a letter of interest and, um, okay. you know, kind of talk Perfect. to each one and see what their level of interest is. I've got one name uh, from somebody and another person I reached out to. So I think they're both willing, uh, but I'm not sure what the level of interest on both are. So we'll just I thought we'd only have one person and we we didn't have any, but, uh, but then all of a sudden we got two. So now we, we've got to pick between the two, but um, I just will get back in touch with you all. And um, I have uh, bounced that Could stuff you, off. Could um, you make Pina, sure that's on the with, agenda, Chris? Yeah, we need to make sure yeah. that's on the agenda. And I've talked with uh, Tina and Darius about it as well, because they're Perfect. looking for somebody for us to appoint. So, um, yeah, because the school committee will be back yeah, in session yeah, pretty soon. Pretty quick. Yeah. Um, then the next item on the agenda is authorization of temporary pay adjustment for assistant town administrator. Um, Casey, do you want to tell, tell us about this? I do. I'm asking the board to consider this um, in light of some of the staffing adjustments we've had to make in the select board office in the past several weeks. Um, the request for the pay adjustment retroactively to July 1st would be to increase that pay rate to 39.70 per hour which is an increase to grade G step two on the classification plan. Mm -hmm. And it's to compensate um, Chris for the additional workload that he's been experiencing as we've had to make adjustments in the office. I um, support this. Um, I just want to say thank you to Chris because you have stepped up to the plate and you've done an amazing job um, with the extra work. And do we, do so, we? Thank you. Yeah, before we make any motions, I just want to, yeah tease out the information. So um, this adjustment is open-ended. It's temporary for the period that we need to make these adjustments. Right. So it could be, it could be three months. It could be two months. It could, it be, could be. Right. So we, we don't have a time frame at yeah. this point, Tim. I do. Yeah. I wish I could tell you that. No, much. no, that's good. I just wanted to it, it, clarify. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's, not, it's just, we're doing it retroactively from July 1st till. Right. And I, I, I said so privately to Chris and publicly, I will re reiterate how, um, you know, pleased we all are with the, you know, the things that you've been able to do uh, under tough circumstances, you know, weather and um, all, all other kinds of obstacles that have been thrown your way. So thank you. Thank yeah. you all. I really appreciate all of you being so supportive through this time. It's really meant a lot. Uh, you've done a lot. Thank we you. have a we have a good team here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been very grateful for Casey's advocacy and help help to us. So we need a motion. Yes. So, so I'll make a motion to retroact retroact retroactively make a temporary pay adjustment of thirty nine seventy per hour to July one twenty twenty three uh, through the period to be determined um, for additional uh, work that uh, Chris Nolan has taken on for the benefit of the town. I will second that. And then uh, for discussion, um, is this a is this one step or what, is he at G already? No, no. Okay. This actually brings him up to a higher level on the classification plan. Okay. Currently, he's um, in step uh, grade F. Grade F. Okay. And this is consistent with pay adjustments we've done when we've had to make staffing adjustments in. Yep. No, I understand. Just curious. Yep. Okay. Um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. And again, thank you, Chris. Um, thank you, Bob. Casey, do you have any updates you want to give us on your At this ministry? point, I'd like to hold off and give you better updates until my, uh, on yeah, the, regular the next, next, uh, next meeting. Okay. Um, I Just to let you know, Darius um, and Bill Idris will be here at 615 next week, oh. meet with the Energy Committee. Oh, okay. So um, Chris just uh, was going to um confirm with them and the energy committee for us on the ninth right chris yeah i can send them a friendly nudge of an email yeah. just, Great. just make sure the energy committee is aware sure um, and then we're going to ha have uh confidence analytics and do we have anything else that we have on the agenda i think i think it's really important that we have 
again, another storm update. Hopefully we'll not have yeah. additional damage, but we need to keep on top of this. Mm -hmm. um, and any updates from Joe and Natalie? So Chris, when we put this on the agenda, let's put it as a placeholder with multiple items. Yeah. Like we do with several others. Thank you. Okay. Well, then I'll take a uh, motion to adjourn. adjourn. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Tim Hill, G.I. Chairman McDaniel, aye. And Carolyn S.I. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.